Hey guys, in this video I would like to briefly answer three questions. What is the size of the Linux kernel stack? Where is it located? And how many kernel stacks are there? So here's what I learned today. I have my Linux kernel version 5.16 on x86-64 architecture and I have my bash alias called VM kernel uh, as you can see it helps me start start chemo command and it's a little bit different from what you would normally expect to see uh, there is no disk uh, no init ramfs or user space of any kind uh, we, know, we don't need it since we are concerned with kernel stacks only and uh, this part of the command uh, specifies a path uh, to a kernel that I have recently compiled and this part of the command is the kernel command line string uh, with the options for the kernel so I think uh, the best way to answer those questions would be to track PID0 process it's not PID1, uh, your systemd or init process. PID0 is an idle task, uh, a task that is supposed to do nothing. So let me start uh, chemo. And uh, chemo is waiting for GDB to attach. and uh, I'm gonna specify a local target okay perfect and uh, let's go to kernel scat core and uh, let's find the function that is supposed to initialize uh, an idle thread uh, just by reading this comment uh, of the init idle function we can tell that there is one idle thread for every CPU let's verify that and uh, set a breakpoint on that function okay and set it loose perfect and uh, Okay, so kernel is booting up and we hit a hit a breakpoint. At this point, we have no kernel threads apart from this thread. Uh, only CPU0 is online and it should be initializing idle threads for uh, all other CPUs. Uh, so the comment didn't lie. Uh, let's continue, but first I would like to set uh, a few convenience variables and uh, since I have four CPUs uh, I'm gonna hit the same hit the same breakpoint uh, three more times okay. and this is uh, CPU 1 And this is CPU two. And this is the last one. And let's continue. All right kernel is up and it's gonna wait indefinitely for a root device but there is none so and uh, let's interrupt our kernel perfect so we have four idle threads running uh, let's check them and their kernel stacks Okay, let's check uh, the top of the stack. Okay, and let's check the bottom of the stack. 
this is CPU three. Okay, uh, and let's do the same for let's say CPU one and in GDB uh, uh, the numeration starts from one uh, while in the kernel and uh, well in C you start from zero so don't be confused by T2 and uh, let's check the top of the stack and let's check the bottom okay so the value of the bottom and uh, let's do that for uh, CPU 0 so this is the top of the stack and this is the bottom okay so um, we can see that uh, every kernel thread uses its own kernel stack. Perfect. Now the difference between the top of the stack and the bottom of the stack is your actual stack size. And uh, as you can see uh, it's roughly 8,000 in hex for every stack. So this is the top, this is the bottom, and for example for this one, for the CPU one, this is the top, and this is the bottom so again 8000 in hex and for the CPU 0 it's the same thing so this is the top and this is the bottom so 8000 in hex uh, gives you 32 kilobyte kilobytes uh, when converted to decimal and that is that is the size of the kernel stack which is a bit too much uh, let's figure out why also let's uh, figure out why the virtual address of the stack of the idle thread for CPU 0 is different from all other threads so you can see that this virtual address is different from, for example, these two. And let's go to init, init underscore task. The init task is special because it's the only kernel thread that is initialized statically. And let's actually find it. And so the stack is initialized with init stack variable which is uh, an array of thread size thread size bytes defined somewhere and the thread size bytes is defined as page size which is 4096 left shift 
thread size order and uh, thread size order is three because I have Kassan enabled uh, so therefore if you have Kassan enabled your kernel stacks are 32 kilobyte, uh, kilobytes on x86-64 and uh, let's try to find out where where this is defined so it's defined as part of the kernel link script and uh, uh, let's go to that linker script all right so uh, the init stack should have the same address as the beginning of the data section in the kernel elf file uh, so let's double check that And you can see this is the address of the data section of the ELF file and uh, this is the value of that init stack uh, variable that represents the array which is uh, which represents a stack for the idle thread that starts on the CPU 0 and uh, that that particular idle thread is special all right guys to summarize kernel stacks are 16 kilobytes in size uh, on x86 64 but if you have compiled kernel with kasan uh, they are 32 kilobytes every kernel thread uses its own kernel stack Kernel stack for idle process on CPU 0 is located in the directly mapped kernel memory. That is the memory that you allocate with kmalloc, for example. Uh, and all other kernel stacks are allocated in the virtually mapped memory. Uh, that is the memory that you allocate with vmalloc. Uh, and it's actually, uh, there is a config, kernel config option to enable or disable that. Uh, called config underscore vmap underscore stack um, there are also interwrap stacks uh, but this is a topic for another video and uh, this is it thank you very much for watching